Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Nestor. I welcome you to our Timely Truth. Today is Friday, and it is my desire that you be encouraged with the Word of God today. My topic today is just very simple. What is the danger of over-familiarity? And I know that a lot of times they wonder, like when you wake up from Monday all the way to Sunday, you notice that majority of the things we do are not really brand new things. In fact, they said, according to this study, that 90% of the things we do every day are pretty much the same thing. So the danger of that, of course, is that if you do certain things over and over and over and over again, you lose that enthusiasm, you lose that that, that, that excitement, you lose that anticipation of things to come because you are familiar with the things you do. And spiritually speaking, the danger of overly familiar with things is that you no longer desire uh, to be expectant and to be passionate about the things you are supposed to do as you walk with the Lord. So let me just share to you a few things like, how do I know if I'm already familiarized or overly familiar with my spiritual life? I have, I'll share to you 10 things today that may remind you that maybe you find yourself in one of these areas. Number one is it could turn your worship into mere singing. When was the last time you felt that when you come on Sunday, you're so excited to worship God? Or have you been lately experiencing like you worship, you clap your hands, you stand, you sit, you jump, but it's just a mere motion? Well, probably you have hit this place of familiarity because your worship have turned into singing. Number two, it could turn your Sabbath day into Sunday obligatory. And a lot of times people wake up on Sunday, not because they want to go to church, not because they love God, but because it's Sunday. And if that is, the, if you feel and if you sense that that it's where you are right now, maybe you are now in a, what we call spiritual familiarity. Number three is this, it could turn your grateful giving into compulsion. When, you know, when the tithes and offering plate is being passed around, what do you feel? Do you feel that when every time you drop that check or every time you use your e-giving, is that do you sense that you're still grateful and thankful and appreciative or you're driven by either tradition or by compulsion or just you're being obligated or it's just a mindset that you do every Sunday and that's about it. If that's the case, maybe you have fallen into what we call spiritual familiarity. Number four, from being a river of life, you have become a Jacob's well. Jacob's well in the Bible is a symbol of a Christian that has gotten to the point of familiarity. Just like that Samaritan woman, when she was taking the water, she said to Jesus Christ, I've become here over and over and over again into Jacob's well. And her life did not change until she met Jesus Christ, the author of the living water. So be very careful because there are certain times in our life or there, you could come to the point in your life that you started your walk with God with the living water, which is Jesus, and now you have turned into Jacob's well. There's no excitement anymore. There's no encouragement anymore. You're just going through the motion. The next one is this. From being Jordan River believer, you have become a Dead Sea Christian. Of course, we all know the difference between a Dead Sea and a Jordan River. Jordan River flows outside, flows through all its arteries so that it can water the field, it can water the plant and the orchard, while the Dead Sea is a, is a, is a body of water that doesn't have any outlet. That's also the reason it's the most salted uh, body of water in all the world, and it has no living living uh, presence there. It's because it's toxic. It has no outlet. Now there might come. A, there must has been time in your life that you are like a Jordan River. You're always a person that is the resource or source of encouragement and joy and gladness to other people. But as years went by, you you lost that Jordan River excitement. And you feel like you are in the Dead Sea. If that's the case, you probably be in a spiritual familiarity. The next one is this. From a vibrant faith, you have become a clanging symbol. In other words, you feel like as years went by and you walk with God, you feel this emptiness. That you no longer are excited with signs and wonders and miracles. But 
you know, your faith has become what I call a, you know, has come into a spiritual coma. In other words, it's no longer growing and developing. Be very careful because that might be a sign of spiritual familiarity. The next one is from being part of the body of Christ, you have become a member of the church. Big difference between a member of the church and body of Christ. Body of Christ is when you know your assignment, when you know what you're supposed to do, when you know that you're inspired by the Spirit of God and you are doing your part of the body of Christ functioning according to your spiritual gift, your natural gift, and according to your ministry. But when you become a, a just a member of the church, you're just there probably because you're obligated, you're part, uh, you're on the list of the membership, but you're no longer functioning as part of the body of Christ. In, uh, in, in other words, you have fallen into spiritual familiarity. The next one is, from a servant's heart, you become entitled individual. There was a time that you're attracted to people's brokenness and wounds and disparities in life and dysfunctionalities because you want to minister to them. But now you find yourself like you're constantly demanding that why is it that there is no there is no guest speaker? Why is it that there's no youth? Why is it that this church is like this and like that? And you have become a whiny Christian rather than a loving Christian. Be very careful because that could be a sign of spiritual familiarity. Number nine is from having dreams and vision to becoming a stagnant believer. Do you know that what, one of the things that makes us exciting or excited in the kingdom of God is this? Dreams and vision because it takes you into the future. It takes you into the arena of impossibilities that God can only accomplish if you only dream and envision things. But now you have become a stagnant believer. You're only just going through the routines. There's no meaning. There's no purpose. You're dragging yourself. It's almost like you are caught, in, you know, you're just going in circles. Let's be very careful because that could be a sign of spiritual familiarity. Last but not the least is this, from being victorious Christian to being victimized by Satan. There was a time that every time you move and work, and how our being, as the word of God says, you give testimony because of the greatness of the Lord. But now there's no longer testimony. Maybe you have not gone through a lot of testings and trials lately. And so you have nothing to say about how you become an overcomer. There was a time that you were just over, you were just overcoming everything. But now you have become victimized by sin. And at the same time, stagnant Christian. So I hope and pray that this thing... Uh, you know, you have observed this. And if you are in a place of familiarity, the word of God says, Isaiah 40 verse 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on the wings like an eagle. They shall walk and not be weary, run and shall not faint. You know, when you wait upon the Lord, the Word of God says the Lord releases upon us this supernatural divine strength to our soul and spirit and even to our physical body. And then it says that we shall rise up, you know, like an eagle. We will rise up above all the circumstances and we can see the horizon afresh and in you again. We see fresh territories, fresh uh, opportunity because we have been re-strengthened by the divine presence of a living God. He said, we shall walk and not be weary, weary, run and shall not faint. You will walk again by faith and you shall run again with a vision. So the key to not come, uh, being trapped into this over familiarity in your walk with God is this. They that wait. Let's not outgrow our desire to wait upon the Lord each day. Remember, our walk with God is not in every three months, every six months, but it's every day. As we walk every day with the Lord, we are refreshed in our communion and fellowship with the living God. So I hope and pray this one encourages you that be very careful not to fall into the trappings of spiritual familiarity. This is Pastor Nestor. Check us once again this coming Sunday at Jesus is Lord Fellowship, Tom's River, uh, Facebook, and the same one with our YouTube. And of course, also our website, jilfnj.org. God bless you. Hope to see you this Sunday. And of course, Jesus Christ is the number one Savior of the world. No one else. Bye-bye.